Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where and when you are joining us. And today we have people from many different countries joining us, you know, Australia, Romania, Slovenia, Germany, and obviously many from Brazil as well. Um, today we are hosting Tatiana Mota, and uh, she is going to discuss, we are going to discuss a very important subject for all intermissivists. Why do we do an intermissive course? Why? <laughs> uh, so let me introduce Tatiana to you. Uh, Tatiana is an intermissivist born in uh, 1974 in the city of Manaus, state of Amazon in Brazil. Uh, besides having a bachelor's degree in business administration, she's a polyglot, a translator, and an educator. Uh, an interest in parapsychic phenomena led her to consensiology in 1993. And in 1997, she became a volunteer uh, dedicated to consensiology teaching. Tatiana is currently living in Australia in the state of Queensland and the city of Cairns. Uh, immersed in a multicultural experience to deepen her research on global citizenry. She works with the international education and is a volunteer with Biblio Africa, encouraging education through reading and contributing to the acquisition of translation and donation of books in the African continent. Tatiana is also the author of the book Intermissive Course, which uh, exists in Portuguese, in English, available on Amazon. And uh, it's also already translated into Spanish and Romanian. Uh, hopefully it will be published in these two languages still this year. Uh, and I give you Tatiana Mota, all yours. Hello everyone, um, good day to everyone, <laughs> wherever you are on this planet. Um, it is a pleasure to be here today and talk to you guys a little about my experience on the write, research and writing of my book. And also the idea I have by sharing my experience is um, to motivate you as well to deepen your self-research, find your theme you wanna write about and actually publish your book in the end, right? So uh, hopefully I'll be able to um, help you guys with this, you know, with this challenge, hopefully. Um, I want to tell you guys two things first. Uh, the first thing is uh, I'm going to start uh, presenting the slides, but if you have any questions or if you want to do any comments, feel free, okay? You don't need to wait till the end of the presentation to uh, to comment or ask any questions. Um, and the second thing is uh, the principle of disbelief. So it's always good to remind everyone not to believe in anything. So this is what I ask you today. Don't believe in anything, not even in what I'm saying here. So try to experiment, have your own conclusions and see if this makes sense to you or not. Uh, because this is the idea we have in science to um, help people actually experience the phenomena, right? Okay, let's go ahead then. Okay. All right, so today we are going to, I'm going to be talking about these seven topics. The first one, intermissive course, what it is and what we study. Just a general idea, because since most of you guys are really experienced in consensuality. Uh, number two, intermissivist test. So just uh, a summary of the 10 items of the intermissivist test created by Dr. Valdo Vieira uh, to help you guys just make sure you reflect on these uh, strengths the intermissivist has. Number three, the author's case study. So I'm going to share with you some of my experience uh, regarding the intermissive course in my, my current life. Number 
for why doing an intermissive course, which is um, the main uh, point of this presentation, right? Number five, accessing the knowledge of your own intermissive course. So I'm gonna be talking about some ways we have to access this information. And hopefully I wanna hear from you as well. Uh, number six, question, should every intermissivist research, write and publish? That's a good point. So we are gonna discuss about this. And the last one, why did you do an intermissive course? So I wanna hear from you guys as well and, and invite you to while you, you listen to the presentation and to these ideas to um, try to get closer to your helper and think about your intermissive course and the ideas you might have during the presentation, all right? Okay, guys, let's go ahead then. Just an introduction of what an intermissive course is. Um, as a back background, just to remind you guys that the, the STEAM intermissive course is a theory created by Dr. Valdo Vieira, uh, and um, he is the proposed, proposed the science conscientiology and projectiology as well. And he uh, wrote this theory to help us understand more about ourselves and why we are in this lifetime doing what we're doing, uh, the challenges we are having and um, help us be more focused on our proaxis or existential program. And um, just uh, to let you know that when I wrote my book, which is called Intermissive Course, I had, uh, I'm, I'm gonna share this with you guys later, but the idea I had was to create a um, very simple book to help people think about their own intermissive courses. So it's a book uh, directed, it's like a, an entry level book in Conscientiology where everyone who hasn't um, you know, uh, experienced or studied Conscientiology before, they are able to uh, understand what we are and what we are talking about. So the book has uh, um, 10 chapters. Each chapter is related to one of the 10 questions of the intermissive, intermissivist test to help people, you know, uh, reflect about that question and answer the question. So it's a very practical book. And um, the, I'm going to be explaining a little more about the intermissive, intermissive test later. So in terms of the definition, an intermissive course is an advanced educational model composed of disciplines from the most diverse uh, areas according to the students' needs. Well, so far, there's nothing different, I believe, from a uni course, right? a technology, technological course, uh, anyone, any course. So what is the difference then uh, of the intermissive course? So um, it is delivered during the period of intermission, which means the period we are in the extra physical dimension. We are the period that we are not in the physical life anymore. So. Uh, for example, we are now here in the intraphysical dimension, we die, right? And then when we die, we start um, our manifestation in the extraphysical dimension. So this course uh, is, uh, takes place on the extraphysical dimensions in educational communities. And the purpose is to clarify the multidimensional reality of us uh, and apply tools for evolutionary acceleration. So um, this is a very important aspect. Of course, when, you, when we enroll to study in any course, we want to learn more, we want to develop skills, we want to have more knowledge. But the main thing uh, of the intermissive course is that we um, 
are in an environment, an educational environment that will help us evolve in a, in a very technical way. And, um, and in can this we, course, Can we say that it's an environment where uh, our lucidity gets enhanced? And this is why we can accelerate, yeah? Exactly, perfect, perfect, that's it. So, and the idea of this um, extra physical training is to help us lay the groundwork of our next human life. So when uh, we think about us now here, having our lives and uh, in the interphysical life, we um, may think back, right? Before we were born and reflect, what were you doing, for example, two years before we were born? Where were we? Who were we with? Um, what were we learning? How were we planning this life that we are having right now? Uh, so when we talk about intermissive course, we talk about um, the recuperation of unities of lucidity, as just Lily has said. So the information we've studied is here right? It should be here somewhere. So why not try our best to recover this information in order to have a more productive life? And in the intermissive course, we have also studied, te studied techniques to help us remember this information as well. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about it later on. Okay, let's go ahead. So uh, the intermissive course students are called intermissivists. So um, we all, if we have done intermissive course, are intermissivists. And the people who are at the moment doing intermissive, intermissive courses in the extra physical dimensions are also intermissivists uh, as well. Let's go ahead. So second point, where and how do intermissive courses take place? Uh, so, as I told you before, the extra-physical education community uh, or communities, right, where uh, we have uh, an environment that people say that is similar to a university campus. So, we have a, a place where we meet people, we share knowledge, we have um, tutors, we, we've had we have a, a bunch of paratechnological resources to help us think about us, about our life, and what we are going to do in the future life. And, this, and on these uh, campuses, we have extre extremely sophisticated pedagogical resources uh, that sometimes it's even hard for us to understand and, and have an idea in since we are here now in the interphysical dimension. Uh, in regards of the professors of the intermissive courses, they are in general helper consciousnesses that are much more evolved than we are. So usually um, uh, evolutionologists, those consciousnesses who are pretty aware of our group karma, and the group, evolutionary group we are part of, they um, work as our uh, preceptors, our tutors, they help us understand our role in this group and in this current life we are now. So we probably have different uh, professors and tutors in different times during the intermissive course according to what we are studying. And the Homo sapiens serenissimus or serenissimi are the superintendents of the intermissive courses. So according to Professor Valdo Vieira, he, uh, these consciousnesses who are really uh, the most evolved consciousnesses who are in the intraphysical dimension, they are the ones who have actually uh, crafted and designed the intermissive course the way it is uh, now. And it's always good to say that the intermissive course courses are anti-dogmatic, 
libertarian, secular, or non-religious, and defenders of freedom of expression, universalism, and experimentation over beliefs. So um, the intermissive course is uh, an environment where people are free to express their ideas, are free to experiment, are free to discuss, and, um, and everyone is uh, available to interact with you and uh, share their, their ideas with you. And uh, this is very important to say that um, the intensive course has no connection to any kind of religion or uh, dogma or uh, mystic or esoteric knowledge, but we, we the ones that do the intermissive course have our, you know, background in the past, our biography that many times have, uh, has been related to these kinds of knowledge from our past. And, but now when the, the, the student decides to enroll in an intermissive course, he's aware that from that point on, He's, he's going to broaden his knowledge on evolution and uh, be a more active, uh, ha have a more active role in the evolution when they are born. So this may, means that the intermissivist will be a universalist person and uh, interact with different people from different knowledge, background, diversity, and so on. Any questions so far? Can I go ahead? I just added some photos, of course, of intraphysical um, education um, environments as this one from my university, uh, just to help us try to imagine in our minds how or where we were before we were born in, in which intermissive course we were. Um, all right, so it's sort of like a retrocognitive image. So that's that's in Ireland, this it. is a library is in Ireland. The other one, I think it was beautiful a library. Yeah. yeah, beautiful one, right? Yeah. Well, okay, let's go well. ahead then. Okay, so who does the intensive courses? So uh, when I do my courses uh, about the book, people always ask this question. Uh, it's always good to know that us as intermissivists come from different backgrounds, from different experiences, uh, from, um, you know, different uh, knowledge in terms of life, experience and this is what makes the intensive course very diverse which is great because we all can contribute to the other uh, colleagues through our experience but how uh, how do we know who if you know um, you would be an intermissivist or you would be accepted in an intermissive course so the first thing is that the profile of candidates for intermissive courses usually have a, a past experience, a positive experience in some uh, area, area of knowledge or assistance. For example, I put some over here, science. So the intermissivist in the past did some research, some writing, uh, published books or articles on some uh, ideas that helped the uh, community or the planet back then. Uh, philosophy, sometimes they created theories, uh, discussed about morals and ethics. Probably leaders, many leaders from the past. Professor Valdo Vieira used to say that we were we are leaders. Many of us are just like, uh, you know, sort of lazy nowadays. But in the past, we have done a lot. So he always used to tell us to, you know, take this leadership 
and do something different this time, the, the same way we used to do before. Um, parapsychism. So many of us in the past have been already working with parapsychism and, uh, you know, helping people sometimes through alchemy, shamanism, initiations and religions. And for, for some reason, what we did was good, was uh, positive in the end. So this gave, uh, this gave us some merit in order to enroll in an intermissive course. Heuristics, so discoveries, inventions, use of creativity, and assistentiality in general. So uh, throughout, you know, different lives and cultures, uh, sometimes very uh, ordinary kind of assistance, but it actually made a difference back then. So these little experiences we've been having throughout our evolution, um, make the, pers the person we are now. And this is what brings us the merit to, you know, be invited to enroll to an intermissive course, okay? And also we have a positive balance in the personal evolutionary register. So our register of all what we have done uh, throughout the multiple lives in you know uh, centuries and centuries and centuries uh, has a positive balance in the end so this is very important to to make sure that we all understand that even though we are sometimes struggling in this life and you know to learn to be uh, more theoretical and practical in and apply the knowledge we have, sometimes we don't have the experience, we have the knowledge, sometimes we are frustrated, we don't write your bo our books the way we want, we don't do, uh, you know, we don't develop our parapsychism the way we want, or develop our bioenergies the way we, we wish. But um, the fact that you are an intermissivist and you are aware of that, in yourself um, brings the you the strength to know that in uh, in the whole your whole biography it's uh, it's been positive so far so this will give you you know confidence to to go ahead all right guys let's go ahead then uh, what does an intermissivist study in the the intermissive course so we have two phases that are researched uh, according to, you know, many um, um, articles on the intermissive course, tertullias and chats I've had, I had with Professor Valdo Vieira and other researches on the intermissive course as well. So it seems um, as a general idea that the intermissive course has two phases. So we are, let's imagine we are here now we have our lives, then we go through, we, di we die, we go through a desoma, this discard of this physical body, and we start living in extra physical dimensions as a context, as you say, uh, as we say, extra physical consciousness. So we keep having our lives, sometimes not very lucid and aware of our new situation, but there is a moment when we are uh, really aware of who we are, where we are, we, that we are in a new situation, and we are lucid. We are an extra physical consciousness from that point on. So when this happens, uh, this is one of the requisites for the intermissive course, that you are aware you are not an intraphysical person anymore. Um, and uh, in this moment, when you uh, enter the intensive course, the first phase, you're going to do uh, self-research of your personal holobiography, the biography of all your lives from uh, that moment on back, backwards, right? So you're going to dive into your, your micro-universe, uh, learn about your previous lives, the balance of all that experience, uh, learn about your talents, your achievements, 
your your gaps as well, your fissures, your embarrassments. So uh, when I think about this phase, I think it's a pretty challenging phase for the intermissivist, you know, because we face uh, ourselves the way we are in a broad way as consciousnesses. So we see many great things we've done, remarkable achievements, we think about that, but we also uh, study our absolute failures. So um, I always say that uh, intermissive courses are for strong people, people who have strength, you know, to be able to um, deepen the self-research uh, the way it's needed in an, in an intensive course. And uh, in this moment, usually I put this, this photo of this, uh, this uh, first photo, this first picture of this girl looking at the books to think about the Parapsychotheca which is a library or actually a chamber of reflection where you're gonna be accessing the data from your past, your experiences, your previous lives. And uh, I think it's probably a very emotional uh, moment, right? That we are just having the, the uh, getting, achieving or uh, retrieving all this information and, um, and this is what helps us understand deeper, in a deeper way, who we are. Because at this moment, I am Tatiana. I think I am this person with this body, with this life, with, with my work, with my family. And uh, we just get used to that. And we just sometimes forget or even we don't have, uh, you know, space in this interphysical dimension to have all the information from our, you know, holobiography. So this is what happens in the first phase of, of the intermissive course. First, we need to know who we are, what we did, our achievements, or the things we didn't do, and things like that. So this is going to help us understand in a more um, complex way, the way we are. Right? And uh, in this moment, we also have the chance, like in the second photo there, in the second picture, to share our findings about ourselves. So we take advantage of the colleagues we have that are also going through the same experience of uh, deepening the research of themselves to share experiences and the uh, the atmosphere is very, very positive. It's very friendly. It's very welcoming. So you feel um, well and strong and confident to share your gaps, to share your difficulties, to share your, you know, what you, you are looking for in terms of understanding more about yourself. And these people are gonna help you uh, exchanging ideas, chatting uh, about you uh, or about your experience and try to trying to help you understand more about the points you want to deepen your understanding. This part uh, actually reminds me of the guinea pig course from uh, Conscious where people study themselves do uh, and then talk and get the feedback from colleagues and peers. So this is uh, sort of like what happens in this first phase as well, but in a very, very, very uh, positive atmosphere, right? Okay, so if we go through phase one and don't quit the course, don't drop out, <laughs> We go to phase two and what happens here? Uh, this is the present future part. So that's when we are gonna plan the existential program. So first phase, we collect all the information about ourselves. We see what we need to uh, work on in terms of evolution, 
develop intelligences and skills and talents. And then in the second phase, we are going to study disciplines to help us uh, plan our future life and plan an existential program. So at this moment, we study disciplines uh, that will help us uh, when we are reborn, when we have the future life. First, to remember about our um, existential program. Second, to remember we are multidimensional beings, consciousnesses, and not live uh, an ordinary life like most of everyone like in the planet on the planet is right now. Uh, third, develop uh, techniques to uh, access this information from the intermissive course better using parapsychism, bioenergies, and other techniques as well, evolutionary techniques. Um, and we learn about the interphysical dimension. We learn about the life we are gonna have. The we select the family we are gonna have, um, the environment we are gonna face, and in this situation, we have many um, theories, studies, practical studies, where we actually uh, go sometimes on field trips to intraphysical areas where we will be living in the future to experience, for example, gravity uh, or see, feel the, um, the holothocene of that environment, the energies, how people think, how the environment is. Uh, and in these field trips, we also uh, have experiences that will broaden our understanding of evolution and universalism. For example, uh, having field trips to other planets and seeing how uh, these people on other planets live they uh, what experiences they have and this impact impacts us in a way that um, it's pretty even though if, if we don't remember anything we have this uh, sort of like an imprinting of universalism of the need to be universalist uh, respecting the diversity different people and, uh, and the, the urge, the need to help everyone, no matter, regardless of who they are, uh, if they are from, if they have ideas you like, or if they have ideas you don't like, right? And, uh, and in this practical uh, parts in the, the phase two, we also start practicing interassistentiality uh, with the helpers. So depending on the practices we are gonna have, we are gonna practice assistance extra physically uh, together with the helpers, like as a placement, uh, you know, preparation or um, uh, something like that. And we are gonna do, for example, uh, work on rescues, extra physical rescues of consciousnesses, assisting with our energies, uh, and helping people with uh, their um, insights and ideas and so forth. So it depends on the line of your practice, you're gonna be doing different things. Okay, all right, let's go ahead. Okay, so I'm gonna talk real quick about these uh, 10 items, these are the questions of the intermissives, intermissives test. Uh, this is a test created by Dr. Valdo Vieira, which was first published in the 700 experiment treatise, treatise uh, published in 1994. Um, and uh, this is uh, what he says in this um, uh, chapter he talks about the intermissive course and he talks about how intermissivists have some uh, strengths, some strong traits 
that make them intermissivists. And he proposed, he proposed people to uh, study these 10, these 10 um, talents and answer the questions if you are if you have that talent or not whether you have it or not if you do have at least five of these strong traits uh, listed there is a strong possibility that you have done an intermissive course before this life uh, just to remember that uh, professor valdo used to say that we um most of us have been in the intermissive course for the first time. So in our previous uh, extra physical life or um, the, the, the last time we were in the extra physical dimensions before we were born, we did our first intermissive course. So this is good to remember because intermissive, intermissive courses were actually in, implemented for like for real uh, in the 1950s. Uh, so from then, that moment on, we probably have one previous life and then we were con sexes, extra physical consciousnesses and did our first intermissivist course. Um, so let's see the questions real quick. The first one, self-confidence. So the intermissivist, he has this uh, strength. He, he has the absence of mortifying doubts in life. So the confidence to do what they want to do. They don't have like critical phobias, for example, that stop them from doing things and um, realizing things, right? Number two, self-awareness, cer certainty of possessing a sense of immortality and awareness, awareness of eternal life inside of you, in your essence. So the intermissivist, even though they don't know when they are born many times, and I hear that a lot from students, they didn't know anything about, um, you know, what we study here. But when they were kids or adolescents, they had always been sure that they are not just an intraphysical person, that this life is not just this one, that there is something else beyond this life uh, and this experience, and that they will not die and finish when they finish this life. So this kind of uh, certainty is very typical of intermissivists. The next one, prioritization. So a deep-rooted aspiration regarding taking useful advantage of the current existence. Uh, and, uh, is, and this self-awareness comes as a responsibility for the intermissivist. You know, he, he feels, he or she feels that they need at this life, do something. They feel they have something to do. They feel there is like a little, you know, um, clock here, alarm clock, you know, always, you know, remembering them that there is something they should be doing. And uh, this happens sometimes since they were children, since childhood. Uh, let's go ahead then. Uh, number four, seriexis. So the acceptance of the theory of seriexis as a fact. Same thing. The intermissivist is born. He knows uh, this is not the only life he has had. He has had previous lives. He's going to have future lives. And this is okay. This is not, uh, you know, a problem for them. Uh, this doesn't create any, um, any um, fear or frustration or anything. They are just in peace with that reality. Number five, hyperacuity. So experience of enlightening inspirations. So this is the innate ideas about your destiny, your career, your seriexis, your life. So sometimes the intermissivist, he, since he was very young, he or she, they, they have a clear understanding of some things they need to do. And the, the, another point is they also sometimes don't remember exactly what they need to do, but they know what they 
don't need to do. They can't do. They know the things that they, you know, I, I'm not going to that road because that's going to give me trouble. He knows and uh, they know. And uh, this is very interesting because it has to do with uh, the main idea that was imprinted in the intermissive course. And this gives you some guidance as things that you don't, you're not allowed to do in this life, right? Let's go ahead, number six, uh, self-motivation. So spontaneous self-motivation, especially on your parapsychic practices. Uh, I remember when I was an adolescent, I didn't have much uh, experience about parapsychism, but I got curious. So I thought it was something I could, you know, know what that is and how people do it. I didn't think it was for me and that it would be a tool for my life back then. But I had this motivation to, you know, to check it out, to go there. And I ended up going to different schools of knowledge uh, from religion to mystical, esoteric, always being curious to understand about parapsychism. Uh, number seven, parapsychism, uh, sporadic yet convincing, convincing and pacifying parapsychic and animistic self-perceptions. So this includes all, you know, experiences related to your parapsychism, such as the projection of the consciousness, uh, your, the development of your energies, uh, energy coupling, and so forth. So uh, sometimes, the, just like me, I, I didn't have many uh, parapsychic phenomena in, when, while I was a kid and an adolescent, but the few um, experiences I had, I never forgot them. They were very, uh, they are not really complex, but for me, they were very important to, you know, guide me throughout my life. Number eight, praxis, indefinite yet persistent intuitions about some important existential task, which is your praxis. So that's what, what I was telling you, you guys before. Uh, sometimes when you are a kid, you have these ideas of something you have to do, uh, something you have to learn, uh, something you are attracted to in terms of knowledge, in terms of... Uh, um, ideas of a profession, of what you want for your life. And these little things should be very well um, um, taken care of. So now at this moment, try to remember since you were a kid, what kinds of ideas you had. Did you, what did you want for your life, for your future? What you wanted to be when you grew up? Uh, did you have any feelings when you were around your family, your friends at school? What kinds of sensations you had? Did you have any um, uh, parapsychic experiences? Uh, and these little things, when we think about them, since we were kids, can show you some um, ideas of our existential program. This is very important to think. Number nine, self-retrocognitions, logical, coherent, definite, uh, definitive, and enriching self-retrocognitions. So at this moment, uh, one of the most interesting retrocognitions we can have is the retrocognition from our intermissive course from those ideas we have to implement now. It's like um, a crease, you know, on your mind, in yourself, with these things you need to do, these tasks you have to execute throughout your life. And um, again, sometimes people don't have, you know, retrocognitions. It's funny because uh, the readers of my book and when I give courses, they always think I have the whole understanding of my intermissive course, of my proaxis since day one. Um, I, they know, they think I'm like updated and I know what I'm doing and everything is going like as expected. 
And this actually, we all know that it doesn't happen like this. Otherwise, if we knew everything we had to do, if, uh, like in our early ages, we would be like really lost and got crazy maybe. Uh, and uh, so this, this kind of uh, knowledge, we are downloading this information as we are evolving little by little in our praxis, right? And 10, omni interaction, personal and self-aware identification of the cosmos, life and order in universe uh, under the permanent control of evolved con consciexes. So um, I guess this is so complex. I remember when I answered the intermissivist test, first time I, I didn't uh, say I had this item because I didn't even understand it. It took me many, many years to understand what is um, this, you know, sense of universalism, of, the, of you being part of the cosmos, of you being part of the universe, and of you doing little things that are trivial sometimes, are actually um, contributing to the whole system, the whole mechanism. Um, so now that we have these 10 items, uh, I invite you to think about them and answer them uh, anytime when you have, if you haven't done already, right? But it's always good to think about them and, uh, and talk a little, have a little uh, chat with your helper in order to, you know, deepen the research of these uh, these reflections here. Guys, any questions so far about this? Are you okay? All right, let's go ahead then. Okay, so I'm going to share with you guys the my case study. Uh, this is the book I, I published in uh, 2016. Uh, as I told you before, this is a um, entry-level book because I, I know that in, my, in this current proaxis I have, the, my uh, target audience is uh, people who are not aware of the science conscientiology, of all, all this reality that we study in a scientific way. So um, I know that I have you know, many uh, talents to help people understand uh, complex ideas in a simple way. And I use exactly this talent I have to write this book. Uh, but as an experience for you guys to think about your own intermissive courses as well, and what you're going to write about in your uh, research, or if you haven't written a book, or if you're not writing a book yet, you don't have a theme of research, I'm going to share some things about my life to you, with you. So, uh, uh, in terms of my childhood, I was born in Brazil, in the Amazon. Uh, and when we think about the Amazon, we think about the jungle, the monkeys, right? Uh, indigenous people. Uh, and it's funny that in Australia, when I say I'm from the Amazon, they look at me as if I am a very exotic person. And, uh, and they feel like, oh, now I know someone from the Amazon, actually. So that's, it's pretty funny. And I actually like it. I like to, to say that. And uh, so when we think about the Amazon, we think about, you know, all that. That's a more wild environment, right? And uh, what happened in this, in, in this life is that even though I was born there, I was born in, the, in a big city. Uh, pretty big city, uh, and my family was a very positive, I had a very positive environment. The, my parents were wealthy, I, I had access to the best education in town, I had access to, uh, I, I was able to travel a lot, I was able to um, uh, study whatever I wanted. So I liked languages since I was like six, seven years, I started studying languages and uh, everything I wanted, I was able to have not only, uh, you know, physical 
material stuff, but also in terms of knowledge and experiences. My parents were very, very, um, um, they really respected uh, whatever both uh, me and my sister and then my brother as well, we wanted for our lives. They really respected what we wanted. And it is, this was pretty unusual. I had, I had um, the li liberty to do whatever I wanted, really, whatever I wanted. I first traveled when uh, by myself when I was 10 years old. So I, we just didn't do anything wrong because I don't know, but it, whatever we could do, we, we, we wanted to do, we could do. And one thing that um, I really, I know it's something I requested sort of was that all of my family, both my parents, my brother, my two brothers and my sister, they are all extrovert people, all of them. I was the only one that was born wrong. <laughs> so uh, this was amazing because from them, from, from living and uh, interacting with them, I learned how to talk to people by watching them how to uh, you know uh, interact with people talk make fun tell chat and things like that and this helped me a lot because i was an introvert when i was born very shy person and uh, can you imagine if i was born if i were born in a family of professors who are just studying among their books and writing and you know having their like life all dedicated to their studies, I would probably not be here right now. So my family and the Amazon, actually, the Amazon is a state where people are very outgoing. It's hot, so people don't have much clothes. Uh, it's very, um, uh, very, there are many, many different um, um, uh, cultures, very specific from the, the region. So I sort of I was inserted in that environment to help me come out of my shell, you know, through my family, through the, the environment of the culture of the city, uh, the people and everything. So this, is, this was a very interesting situation for me. Um, and when I was about six, five, six years old, um, I used to feel uh, a very strong nostalgia from a place people I didn't know. I felt this every day. I looked at the sky uh, and I felt uh, I missed people I didn't know. I missed a place I didn't know. And then after some time, I, I found out that I was sort of like uh, missing the intermissive course and the extra physical, um, and my extra physical town that uh, where I left many people I loved and uh, I had this all this experience uh, in the intermissive course. So this is something that yeah, um, I, I felt while a child. And then I became an adolescent and then I became a normal person, okay? A very, very uh, intraphysical person, just, you know, going to parties, having fun with friends, I traveled a lot. I had um, the chance to be an exchange student in the US. So this was amazing experience for me to develop many skills and meet many people when studying in a different culture. And this helped me a lot uh, in uh, the future projects I had. Uh, but then something happened and I, I got there was a synchronicity and I got to learn about conscientiology. Uh, before that, I was also studying uh, spiritism um, and other mystic and esoteric uh, knowledge, kind of knowledge in, in institutions, but always as a curious person. I never felt that place was my place. I always felt there was something else and I was sort of like trying to, you know, sniff and try to see uh, what, where, where my place was. 
Um, but then I, as I told you before, I was just, you know, an adolescent, I in person having fun with friends and stuff. But there was a, an, a situation that happened in my life that um, changed everything. My uh, one, one of uh, a very good friend of mine died very young in his early 20s in a car accident. So this was a huge impact on me. I was very impacted by the situation. And at the exact moment, I um, know I, I got to know about this. I learned about the situation that he had died. Uh, everything changed. I wanted to help him so much. I wanted to help him. I wanted to assist him extra physically. I started thinking about the helpers and asking them, please to help this guy and et cetera. And from that moment on, it, uh, it was like a few months for me to uh, get to meet and to see Conscientology, you know, events again, because I had lost, totally lost contact with anything related. But some synchronicities happened. And then there I was a few months later, uh, you know, volunteering and um, when I started volunteering and, um, you know, being with the group of Conscientiology, the recuperation of cons, of unities of lucidity, were very fast. So I was very fast interested in studying, in um, training to give lectures in Conscientiology, doing volunteer work, challenging myself, helping you know, the team, and that was very, very fast. Um, and then in my 20s, I just dedicated myself mainly to Conscientiology, studies, teaching, and volunteer work. Uh, I learned a lot. I developed many skills. Uh, as I told you before, I was an introvert person, uh, and um, the Conscientiology teaching was a huge um, um, like impact for me, you know? It was a very challenging experience and I'm so glad I did it because my life, is, my life changed totally from that point on. And I could develop my communication, develop my extroversion. Today I consider myself an uh, ambivert I have my moments that I need to be more introspective, but I am very confident and happy to interact with people and be among people. So this, uh, I'm sure, I'm 100% sure that this is due to my conscientiology uh, training in teaching and my family environment as well. Um, and, okay, what else do I have here? Uh, well, in, in this 20s, also, when I, when I was teaching, we had the training to be, every year we did recycling training in, uh, to be teachers, right, in Conscientiology. And in one of these trainings, I had a very strong experience with the intermissive course. So we, we were answering the intermissive test. And I answered the questions. I was very dedicated to think about it. And, and after this, we had uh, in a, in a bioenergetic practice where uh, all of us, uh, each one in their own situation, uh, relaxed and worked with their energies to access information about their own intermissive courses. And that's when I had the experience of uh, just summarizing here. It was like um, many different situations, but the main thing related to my, my research and my book is that I saw myself in, um, in an extra physical and educational environment, such, such as a campus with many students. It was daylight, very beautiful place, uh, students here and there. Um, and I, I felt this was a place I had been uh, before before I was born. And uh, this was a place where I had some um, studies in the intermissive course. It was a, an extra, extra physical community. 
And uh, this, uh, this place was not only an educational environment, but it was also um, an environment of um, practice, like practice studies, where people would go there to do some practice studies, some placement, internships, sort of like that. And uh, I noticed that people who were studying that place were studying things regarding education. They were teachers, they were educators, they were professors. And, um, and there were some people who were um, walking and saying hi to me, uh, you know, waving their hands. They knew me, I didn't know them, but I probably know them, but I didn't remember. People were very happy. They were waving at me, saying hi. And at one moment, there was this lady, a uh, young lady who came, and he, she was holding hands with a queue of children who were walking behind her. She was sort of like, you know, walking them around to show something, the campus or whatever. So she was sort of like in a practice with children at that moment. And all these children looked at me, they were walking in front of me and they were also waving and saying hi and very happy to see me. And it was very impactful to me that moment because I, I noticed that my, in my whole biography, I have worked with education for many years, teach, teaching children, adolescents, adults, and I've even done that in this lifetime as well. But I have a, a, that, that's when I noticed that my extension program is very, is like the main thing, the Matoto scene is related to education, to parapedagogy. Um, and um, and then, uh, this is what in the future became the theme of my book because all these experiences together are related to education, to the intensive course, and to my proaxis. And when I chose the theme of my book, I chose uh, because I wanted to help people feel what I felt in this experience, in this uh, experience while I was in this um, uh, energetic technique uh, practice. And uh, I wanted people to read a book that helped them also have the same experience I had regarding their own intermissive courses. So uh, this is why I, I know that this book is related to my proaxis and, and has to do with something I studied before I was born. Uh, and this took me uh, some years, a few years to understand, to make all these, you know, this puzzle and make sure I, I really understood that I had to do with that and my proaxis uh, is related to that. Tatiana, All right, can, guys. Can I, I, yes. Um, sorry, um, I have a, an interesting question here to 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 ask you. Um, Ligia is asking. Ligia couldn't be here today. She's very sorry because she is the translator of your book into English on yes. top of it all. Yeah, but she she was busy, and she is asking here. If you can share with us your perceptions uh, as regards inter-resistance, you know, both uh, self and hetero, um, in, in the process, on one side, in the process when you were writing the book, in the process of writing the book, and afterwards when the book got published in English, if you had some, some more para-perceptions, uh, you know, related to inter-resistance as well, okay. or, you know, self and natural de intrusion all that that kind of thing you know yeah that's a very interesting question um <clears throat> so before the book uh i around 2012 i had the idea no i have to make a book it's time right and i started to think about it i had no idea of what to write i had really no idea and um and one day i was at CIAC in foz do iguaçu and i had I re just remembered the episode, episode I just told you of my experience, extra physical experience. I just remember that it came in my mind. And uh, I remember that at that moment I had just 
done the intermissivist test. It was the, the practice, right? We did the test and then we did the, the um, bioenergetic uh, practice. And then I had this idea, wow, maybe I can make a book to help people answer the test and have the experience. So it was pretty simple, you know, when I had this, uh, uh, this idea that actually I'm sure it was from some uh, extra physical helper, you know, uh, input. But um, while writing the book, it, it helped me um, understand more about my uh, responsibility as an intermissivist. This was very clear. I had some phenomena as well, not many, but I had, I had to reorganize my life. So I, I, I started writing every day, uh, at, uh, wake up every, every morning at five in the morning and write until five, uh, 6.30 every day. Um, and I was looking for the tools Conscienciology institutions had to help me write the book as well like, uh, you know, the, um, uh, the training, the course we have to write books. So I used to go every month, every month to those courses and write my book and get more, you know, fuel to be uh, motivated to continue writing. So this helped me a lot. Um, and I took advantage of all these tools we have uh, in the inter in the conscientiology institutions, but the main work was mine. I had to do it. You know, nobody would do that for me. So the sense of responsibility was very, very uh, uh, big. And uh, when the uh, so in in the the process of writing, if you guys are writing books, you might see that. Sometimes you are so, you know, excited. Sometimes you are bored. You don't want to see, you don't want to open your computer. You are intruded. Uh, you don't have ideas. You read, it, nothing makes sense. It's so, it sucks, man. It really sucks. But uh, just keep going, you know, keep going. Because when you publish your book, it's the most amazing sensation. Even though, you know, like my book is not, uh, there is no, um, uh, you know, uh, new finding in the science. This is not the purpose of my book. It's just uh, an informational book for people to research the, their own intermissive course. But anyway, the sensation is amazing because you achieved something that has to do with the operaxis. And this is when the thing gets, you know, better because people start reading your book, they start uh, reaching out to you for help to ask questions about the book, about the experience, about uh, you know, to share the experiences. So people read the book and then they have their own experiences and they have experiences much, 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 much better than mine who wrote the book, which is amazing. So, um, this is the, the best like thing. We are know, opening like, the doors, uh, generally say, we are opening doors and windows for others to come. Exactly. So when you publish a book, you access people, you have no idea where they are, what they do, uh, and they just use that information for themselves and take the, you know, the best benefit of it. So it, this is the amazing point. And with the, the English uh, version, it was very interesting because I was working uh, on the translation and revision of the book while in Australia already. And I had the whole different environment here, uh, different uh, Penta experiences um, and, um, and setting, settling you know, down here, which was uh, different experience as well. I haven't um, launched my book in English yet even though it's already available, but I have not had, I had not, have not had the opportunity to, you know, really launch it uh, in English. So maybe at, let's very, see at the very least, we will do it during the International Week this year. Okay, that's for sure. 
if not <laughs> earlier, we will we will definitely have you in in you know a, a, a little time that we are doing at, at oh, the that's okay. of international <laughs> week. Awesome, yeah. yeah. But that's it, I guess. Uh, I uh, from my experience, I really encourage all of you to work on your book. I know it's not easy. But stick to, you know, stick to the reason you want to write it. I wanted to write a book to help people have the experience I had. This is what I, you know, I stuck to it the whole time. It was not to make a nice book. It was not to make a book everyone would like, say it's beautiful, well written, or the best content, or a new finding to revolutionize conceptuality or the world. I didn't think anything related to that. I just wanted to help someone out there to have the experience I had because that experience changed my life. So this is what helped me go all the way to the end and not because if we get stuck, you know, to the what people are going to say, this, this idea is not the best. Other people write the same thing. Uh, and there are so many great people who study and write about the intermissive course and, uh, and, and they don't have a book and I have a book. I'm not the best person, but I'm helping the way I can. So try to think about the assistant. You are writing your, um, you know, book, your work and stick to that because this is when the helpers are gonna come, extra physical helpers and inspire you and you're gonna have ideas to go ahead with your research, okay? Okay, uh, cool. there's one more question here. Uh, yes. Maybe, maybe Wagner wants to talk, I'm not sure. Or if he wants me to read, let's see what he says here. Uh, since we are reborn, it is known the difficulties to remember for most of us about past lives, understanding that is in our, uh, in our own benefit. But in the case of the intermissive course, why would that be equally difficult to remember the attending of this type of extra physical training? Well, I will... Uh... I don't know, but I have my experience. Uh, the first day, the first day I stepped on a conscientiology class, uh, and um, and I got into the place, and the people would say, "Hey, Tatiana, finally you are late. Come on, we are waiting for you. Look, you have to do this. You have to volunteer. You're gonna lead this this team. You're gonna be a teacher, conscientiology teacher. You're gonna write a book." You're gonna travel the world. You're gonna be talking about this to all these people everywhere. Uh, you have a lot of work. You are late, man. What, what, what were you doing? I would probably turn around and leave because as I told you before, I was a very introvert person. I would never ever think that I would be now like I am talking to you um, and explaining about these ideas and talking about a book I have written. Come on, this is ridiculous. If anyone would ever tell me the first day, I would just turn around and say, these people are crazy. Let me go back to my life that it's more uh, intelligent, most intelligent, intelligent thing to do, you know? So sometimes this is like a, um, a way for us to um, live our life the best way we can and take one step after the other. So we have one challenge, we recycle that trait. We have, we do, we all do have the ideas of what we need to do, right? At least something. So if we do this something, um, you overcome that situation, you develop skills, you learn more about yourself, you are more motivated, you have more energy, and then another, you know, layer is going to open of your proaxis. And this is how we evolve, because 
if we knew it, if I knew it, I don't know about you guys, but if I knew it, really, I, I, I would be out of that place. You know, I would be out. I wouldn't stay there. I would, I would be too scared to hear all that. And saying that I was late? This, Come on. this happened to me as well. In, I was also very introverted. And what, what uh, brought me out of myself, so to speak, was giving conscienciology classes. That's how the helpers yeah. managed to help me. You know? Before that. Yeah. yeah. This is totally. an amazing tool. And I always talk about this right so let's go ahead we don't have much time anymore <laughs> we okay. don't it's getting good but yeah we don't have much yeah, more time. so i'm just gonna go faster and um so okay. why do uh so after all we talked why doing an intermissive course then right why did we decide to you know face this challenge because uh it's not easy it's not an easy task right it's I remember Professor Valdo used, uh, said once that he didn't, if he could, he wouldn't be a leader. He wanted to be in the audience watching like we were, you know, in his courses. It was like, it was tiresome for him. He wanted to be just watching in the audience. So it's not easy to become a leader. And the intermissive course is a course for leaders, leaders that will change, uh, you know, uh, environments, communities, uh, people's planet, perceptions, uh, people's way of thinking, yeah, all that stuff, yeah. all the ideas that you so, bring makes people think. Yeah. So why do we do then? Because first we, we we came to up to a level of maturity. The ordinary life didn't um, uh, motivate us anymore. We wanted to do more. We came to a point that we wanted to do more. We were more mature than the average of people. Also self-development, we want to learn something to help us be better people. We wanted to learn techniques uh, to, be, to evolve, to be better you know, in everything we do. Not many people want that. And I'm talking about deep uh, self-research, deep self-development, right? Intelligences, we had we came to a point that we all the intelligences we had were not, you know, um, were not enough anymore. We wanted to develop evolutionary intelligence. This is like an upgrade to all the intelligences and to everything we had done before in previous lives. Um, lucidity and awareness. We wanted to be more lucid of what we are, who we are, what we need to do, and uh, be more um, uh, and give a greater contribution to society by being more lucid. We wanted, uh, we had a group, we, all, we, have, uh, we have an evolutionary group and uh, sometimes these people went together and they rescued us as well because we are part of the group. So sometimes we went, we ended up in the intermissive course because of our group. Uh, Professor Valdo used to say that um, he was stuck uh, to us. We had this group karmic, uh, you know, bond uh, from the intermissive course, but he was very happy with it. So, <laughs> so maybe this is what happened with us. We had this group who was evolving and we were like sort of like in the same level, but we are lost and they rescued us and took us, you know, invited us to go to the intermissive course as well. Proax, uh, uh, assistentiality. So we came to a point, point that all kinds of assistance that we did in previous lives, previous lives was um, not enough anymore. We wanted to do more. We wanted to improve the level of assistance to a professional level, not only uh, helping people with simple things, but with their ideas, with their minds, with their knowledge and, um, and innovative ideas. So that's why we, one of the, the reasons, reasons we entered the intermissive course. Proaxis. So in previous lives, we had, uh, we might have had, um, you know, experiences such as a proaxis, but little experiences like as, um, mission of something to do 
around the family, around the you know community um, you were at. But then we found out that we could do maxiproexis, something related to the whole uh, planet and multidimensional. So this is uh, what motivated us to uh, do, do more, actually. And the evolution. So we felt, we understood at some point that we evolve and that we, we, when we evolve, we can do more. When we evolve, we can assist more. When we evolve, we can uh, be a, a mini cog of a maxi mechanism. So this is what also uh, made us make this decision of having an intermissive course, all right? Okay, let's go ahead. Accessing the knowledge of your intermissive course. How do we do that? We talked a lot about this in, in uh, uh, I talked in with my experiences. So parapsychism, I always hear students um, who talk to me say that uh, when they started actually developing their parapsychism in a technical way, using techniques, writing about their experiences, they ended up understanding about their intermissive course and uh, having some innate ideas downloaded, right? Self-retrocognition, we talked a little about it. Um, remember your intermissive course, uh, use the out-of-body experience as well. I know uh, someone who had an experience like that he had uh, out of body experience during a session of consensual therapy, and he uh, really accessed his intermissive course. So this is a pretty um, positive and practical way to access these ideas. Energetic signage. So sometimes your energies will tell you something about your intermissive course. You're gonna enter a place and you're gonna feel the energies of that place. You're gonna interact with those people and somehow those people will, uh, and that environment will help you, will help your memory of your intermissive course, of your praxis. So the, the, your energies, when they, your energies inter interact with the environment, this impacts your ideas and your memory, right? The affinity and rapport, so it has to do with your group. So where is your group? Where, is, where are your colleagues from the intermissive course? Where are they? What are they doing? Have you met them? Have you, have you met a few of them? Have you met many of them? Uh, so when you meet your group of affinity, positive affinity, of course, because usually uh, in, in the uh, ordinary life, the affinities are usually negative. So you, when you are young, you meet your friends to get drunk, to go to parties uh, and things like that. So try to look for affinities that uh, bring the best out of you. And this is when you're gonna start also remembering uh, aspects about your intermissive course by interacting with them. Life challenges. So. This, uh, when you accept a challenge, I'm sure you're gonna know more about yourself and your praxis. This is what happened to me when I accept the challenge to become a consensuology teacher. Every day I went to my training, I felt as if I was going to die, to be hanged. It was horrible. I'm, I'm sure Lily felt the same. Yes, high five to us. <laughs> and many other people, right? Because it's really challenging. Uh, and uh, when, you, when you face challenges, you, you naturally download and have more information and data about your praxis. Synchronicity. And that's exactly so... when you start doing this and, and giving uh, classes, that your group starts coming because you are opening the door. You know, they're waiting for you to do it. And that's when, exactly. you know, some people are from your family, some are concierge, some are concierge, some people are new friends, you know, but 
if we don't do it, they, we are not making it possible for them to come. Exactly, yeah. And the synchronicities, right, that start happening you know, with people. For example, now in Australia, I have been through many synchronicities that tell me I, there are many people here I've known for many, many, I don't know, lives, uh, situations I have been through and uh, things like that, that I would never, if I were in Brazil, I would never ever think about this because it's totally new to me. And mental somatic immersion. So the more you read about, uh, about the theme, about intensive course, study the encyclopedia and study the books, the books that are translated already help a lot. I know there are like a huge team uh, working hard to translate as many books as uh, possible, but stick to that and this will help you remember about your intensive course as well. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about some things. Sorry. Uh, so should every term is write and publish? I want, I want to hear from you guys, what do you think? I think that's a possibility, a very strong possibility. <laughs> if we are the first to have the intermissive course, right? It's a huge responsibility, you know, that to start writing about these ideas. Anyone else? No? Yes, I agree with you, yeah. Lily. Uh, but should every intermediate research, every, every, everyone, let's think about it. We, I, I, I don't have the answer. Let's think together. Uh, so these uh, topics here are entries from the encyclopedia written by Professor Valdo Vieira, right? And they are, they can give us some, right? So the first thing, the first point, there's the acceleration of personal history. So he says that we are now at the moment, at the best moment to do an evolutionary upgrade and uh, do more than we have ever done before in previous lives. Uh, it's time for us to beat our own records. So if an intermissivist is admitted into an intermissivist, intermissive course because of their genius from past lives for being lead, great leaders, great researchers uh, that helped assist many people uh, at this moment, what else could we do to you know, break our records? There should be something more than what than what we have already done before, right? Uh, the second Luciana point also wants ask... to ask something. I think, yeah. Lucy. Okay. No, I just wrote that uh, in chat that uh, two days ago I I read something about if you didn't uh, if you want to read something and you this book is not written. So you should do it. You should rewrite exactly. it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> You're the one that you need know. to write it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I remember that one of the reasons I wanted to write uh, an entry level book is that I never found a book to give to my, you know, friends, uh, relatives, Christmas presents, and I wanted a book, you know, that information that everyone could read but uh, with um, advanced an advanced theme but in a way that everyone could read so that's one of the reasons I wrote my book like that and then another entry is existential assets so professor Valdo talks about uh, all the resources we have received from the maxim mechanism and we receive that throughout our life. Uh, you know, for example, as I told you, my family, you know, the education I have and things like that, you know, my life, the people who surround me and etc. So we have many assets and it's time to give back. So he talks in this um, entry about books 
he talks about, uh, you know, writing books, treatises, um, and he says the biggest the assets we have had, the biggest the retribution, we the greatest the retribution we could. Yeah, the more you need to contribute, to give. so give back. this. Uh, yeah, and then he get, and then Professor Valdo gives us treatises, uh, a number millions of you know ideas that have helped us so far in this life. So why not writing a book, at least one in retribution, right? Okay. And uh, the next one is multidimensional self-commitment. So he talks about, um, <clears throat> about the commitment we have done. It's like an official agreement we have done before we were born in the intermissive course that sets the responsibility to us of what we need to do in this life and to put into action. So he, he makes, he puts in this um, entry 10 categories related to this self-commitment of the intermissivists. And one of them is writing the mega just con, which is to write your masterpiece. Remember, he's not talking about writing books. He's talking about writing your masterpiece. So a masterpiece comes uh, after a lifetime of research and experiments and many books written, many articles written until you get to your masterpiece. So uh, then things start getting uh, dirty to us, I guess. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead. Rec retrocognitive agents so he talks about the that we that study and talk and and teach conscientiology are retrocognitive agents so wherever you go through our example we impact people just by being there we don't we need to talk and people get curious about you even though you don't talk about anything so i don't know if you have experienced that so here in australia I experience this all the time uh, because people don't know my, you know, my background in Brazil, what I've done, what I've published, my book or anything. Uh, they're just people interacting in my everyday life. But people sometimes come talk to me like they want to, they are curious about me for some reason. And uh, sometimes these people are curious because they feel the energies and they know that I have some affinity with them uh, from previous lives, from the intensive course and they want to know about it, right? Next point, intermissive is mega challenge. So in this uh, entry, Professor Valdo uh, talk again about breaking your evolutionary records from your past by doing something superior, something in a higher level than everything you have done previously. So. The main aspect here is the evolutionary intelligence. And he talks about being a researcher and publishing your findings again, right? And then um, intermissivist's uh, duty. This is another entry. He talks about the tasks you voluntarily take for you as an intermissivist before you were born. You say, I want to do this. Nobody's going to you know, tell you what you're going to do in this life. All the challenges, all the tif difficulties you're going through, all the problems you are facing, you know, everything in this life, you prepared that, you know, you, you put, you set this to yourself um, before you're born. So um, he talks in this entry about 44 tasks that the intermissivist has to do. And one of them is writing technical articles. The other one being an independent researcher and the other one uh, writing entries of, for the Encyclopedia of Conscientiology. And the last one writing your masterpiece. Again, it's, it's, it's horrible guys, it's horrible. <laughs> it's hard to say that not every intermissivist should do that, right? 
But the good thing, just to finish, I know, uh, I know we are we are later. A little bit right? past the time, <laughs> but yeah. Yes, uh, I, I would, I'm just asking you for five more minutes, if, if possible, to say about talk about the intermissivist intermissivist harvest. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if all of you know about this this um, encyclopedia, but I'll make a some explain. But I'll give you an example. I write a book now. And then I die, I become an extra physical consciousness. When I become an extra physical consciousness, uh, there will be someone here in the intraphysical life who is going to read my book, right? They're going to read my book. And while, while reading the book, they are going uh, to think about me because I'm the one who wrote the book. I'm the author. And I will, as a, an extra physical consciousness, feel that evocation that person is evoking me right and this will give me the chance the opportunity to actually become a helper and inspire this person and give them some ideas and get closer to that that per, that person and bring the energy of their intermissive course and assist them in a different way so the intermissivist harvest is when now at we are sowing the seeds, right? I, I'm sowing the seeds, uh, writing a book. But the harvest is going to happen when after we die. And the, the, our readers are going to give us the opportunity to uh, help them to become their helpers. So isn't this amazing? I think this is amazing. I love this idea, you know. So maybe if you are stuck in your research, think about that. You're going to, you're going to, uh, set to yourself uh, a responsibility that in return will give you the chance to become a helper after you die and you become, a, become an extra physical consciousness, right? Okay, so just to finish, why did you do an intermissive course? You know, think about it. Why did you do it? When was it? Who were, who was, who are you with back then? Uh, do you have this idea in your mind? Um, what are you going to do with them? Start with any, but start, you know, uh, then the other information is going to come, but do something, do the first step. This, this event here, this live is uh, with people who are more experienced in what we are talking about, right? So think about it, write your book. It, don't, it doesn't need to be the perfect thing. There is always a second and third edition. You can change things, you know, but don't, don't waste too much time. Don't put too much pressure. Don't, don't, um, don't feel you have to do the perfect thing because it, even though you, you, you even though you do the perfect thing for you, it's not perfect because we are always evolving, okay? So think about it, set, set, set your, some time on your calendar and uh, take advantage of the Conscientiology activities to help authors write and do that. It's gonna, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. And I wanna be there to see you guys launching your books, all right? Okay. Thank you very so, look, much look. for that challenge as All well. Right. But uh, in, in is... time, hopefully not long from now, I, I also want to, to help um, Uniescon to bring this course of, uh, you know, training of writers uh, and immersion in writing in English so that, you know, more people can do it. Yeah, so this would be really good. In this, yeah. We're working in this direction. So hopefully it will be too Amazing. Long. <laughs> Yes, it's very important. So, uh, just to look at this photo, it doesn't look good, does it? Looks <laughs> weird because where's the group? Where's you know? Where's everyone? It's it's very it's very hard to be lonely, you know. And you you don't find your your group. So, uh, hopefully, you can find our our intermissivist friends and colleagues and be able to work with them on you know biggest projects together with the helpers and help this planet get better and um, 
people have better lives and evolve, right? And that's it, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, this is my email if you need to contact me and uh, the book in English available on Amazon. I'm happy to clarify any questions you have, okay? Thank you so much, Tatiana, for being here, for giving us all this in information. It was really, really very nice. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, also for participating. Any questions, feel free to leave them. And afterwards, Tatiana will answer what we couldn't do today. OK, thank you. Thank you. And see you soon, you. hopefully. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.